When it comes to terminal illnesses, there's not much that is off limits in the mind of a sufferer that is desperate enough for a cure, even substances that are considered illegal in most countries. Uh, Finn Weeks, uh, Finn Week looks at the prospects of cannabis plant, a new and growing industry in the international uh, economy. Uh, joining me in the studio is Jules Stobbs, who's the director of social activism at Fields of Green for All. And he's also known for his cannabis activism work at the Daha Couple and Myrtle Clark, who's the Managing Director of Fields of Green for All. I thank you so much for making the time to join us. Christian, maybe I can start with you. This is always a very controversial topic still to this day. Why <coughs> did Finweek decide to embark on, on such an article? Well, it started on a very personal note, and those always, I find, make for the best stories. Uh, Glenda Williams, the, the reporter who wrote the article, um, has a very personal interest here. There's illness in her family that could be very easily and very well treated uh, with medical marijuana. And because it's not legal and it's not legally available in the country, it presents a really serious issue and a really personal issue for her family. So we started in our editorial meeting, started talking about this, and then we started thinking about the economic impact uh, that the legalization of marijuana would have in South Africa. If you consider how much money is spent um, by the SAPS to, to avoid people using marijuana, and when you consider all the communities that could benefit from from the cultivation and the sale of marijuana. Mm -hmm. And we thought it would be a really, even though it is really contentious, and I'm sure we're gonna raise quite a few eyebrows, we thought it would be interesting to look at what the implications could be on a broader, a broader societal level. Mm. Myrtle, let's bring you into the conversation now. Uh, you've heard what Chris has to say in terms of the implications of a broader societal level. Is it safe to say that you are for, or you know, for uh, the fact that they should decriminalize the use of cannabis? Uh, yes, and they should legalize the, the use of cannabis. Decriminalization is a very gray area. Uh, and also thanks to Finweek. Um, uh, we need all of the positive media exposure that we can get because Fields of Green for All was named that for a particular reason, because this is Fields of Green for all South Africans. This is not just people who are sick. This is not just uh, people who want to invest in this plant. Or th This is uh, something for, for the broader society, as, as you were saying. Um, Fields of Green for All is about the harms of prohibition because often when it comes to the medical uses of this plant, um, the authorities put the cart before the horse. It's very important to remember that hundreds and hundreds of South Africans every day are incarcerated for the use of, the, of this plant, whether it just be a, a tiny little half a stompy in their ashtray in their car, or whether it be a whole field of green. So we, one doesn't want to get ahead of ourselves in South Africa. Let's do everything in the right order. Let's look at the human rights issues surrounding this plant. Why did the police arrive at our home at two o'clock in the morning? Why did they give us a very, very hard time for five hours and then throw us in jail? Why are we still out on a thousand rand bail? Why is this illegal? That's what we need to think about first, and then we can look at the benefits of it. But Fields of Green for All is about bringing the conversation to the people, and we would like to bring together everybody who is interested in this plant, and that's why we've created a non-profit company. Jules? Hello. What do you have to add to that? I mean, surely you're going to have people that are going to say, how would you want to legalize something like this? I mean, what would be your response to that? Well, ironically, the way we think of it is the only way you can regulate this plant to make sure it doesn't get into the hands of the people who shouldn't be using it is to set it free. It has to be regulated. At the moment, it's easier to get Dacha than it is to get beer. Mm -hmm. And that is the crux of the matter. And as, as, as the Dacha couple, South Africa's premier uh, cannabis social activists, we don't so much go around extolling the virtues of the plant mm -hmm. We talk about the harms of prohibition, because if you saw my inbox today, and you were talking on a personal level, you can't believe the strife that South Africans are going through, and the victimization, and the stigma 
that people go through just by having the cannabis plant, whether you're sick or not. Mm. Well, we've seen the legalization of DACA in the states of Colorado and Washington in the US. What yeah. can we learn um, from that process that they've gone through and the effects of it thus far? Well, one of the things that I learned immediately was when we saw the pictures uh, on the 1st of January this year of Coloradans going to a dispensary to collect their very first legal joint, there was no new smokers. Mm. Nobody jumped up and said, right, I'm going to smoke now, it's legal. That didn't happen. So that's a very, very important thing. It's not going to open the floodgates for people to now start smoking cannabis because it's legal. That's, that, that is foremost on my agenda. I, th I think people, my, our detractors say, but everyone will start doing it and we're going to have some sort of zombie apocalypse. That didn't happen and it still isn't, in, isn't mm. happening. But what, what else we can learn from Colorado is it's absolutely bogged down in legislation and they've taxed it to death and the black market right now this week it is 280 US dollars for an ounce of cannabis on the street and it's 400 in a shop. So they've taxed themselves into stupidity here because it's still easy to go to the black market. But what was really interesting about the Colorado case in particular is that you can't get, because it's still outlawed on a national level in yes. the States, you can't get a bank account for you. So you are, you know, you're a legal yeah, reseller of, of marijuana, but you can't get a bank account. So it remains a cash business. Mm -hmm. And as my colleague Glenda said yesterday, as soon as you deal in cash businesses, you have a lot of unwanted elements. So Absolutely. how yeah. would we, how locally, how can we do that differently? I think that we need um, to look very uh, carefully at that and as you say looking at the models uh, presented by Uruguay, Washington and, and Colorado and our mantra for what we call our desired outcomes for our court case is to keep it simple. You know South Africa is bogged down in lots of bureaucratic hassles that open the floodgates for all sorts of corruption, um, all sorts of black markets in everything from cigarettes to sportswear. So we need to look at look at everything with our eyes on the black market all the time it's not an easy business we're going to have to involve everybody in in this discussion so that we come across with something that is doable with something that is simple yet enforceable. Just to bring in quickly, the article highlighted that there are other products associated with the plant, such as hemp, which offer great commercial opportunities. I mean, what are your thoughts on on uh. products like hemp? It's been going around in circles for two generations. It's absolutely ridiculous that just because it looks like dacha, it is dacha. And so if you put a field of hemp in, uh, uh, in the Western Cape, you have to put a two meter fence with electricity all the way around it in case somebody steals it because they perceive that it's something that it's not. So I have no idea why in this country with that, uh, this amount of space and this amount of sunshine and this amount of unemployment that we haven't le led the world in hemp production. We prefer to call it industrial cannabis. Hemp as a word is a, it's a bit of a misnomer. Hemp, I can go into the etymology so of the word. So what is the problem there? Is it a misconception of the well, product you know, itself? It's, or? It's, it's, it's a misconception and the, and the age old adage is well we can't police it because we won't know whether it's hemp or not unless we put it through a laboratory test to prove that there's no uh, mind altering substances within it because of course that's the crux of the whole matter. It's this stoned business. Mm. <gasps> Stop. Stop. <laughs> Mate, so how big is this? Uh, do you know how big this, you know, this industry is at the moment? It's untapped. You're still busy with the court case. And what yes. other opportunities are there outside of, say, medical use? Uh, well, we've touched on the, on the industrial cannabis, and um, the industrial cannabis has got uh, dozens and dozens of applications, from biofuel to obviously the fiber that everybody knows about, um, uh, cosmetics, uh, also building applications. Uh, the hemp house in Cape Town that was built by Hemporium, and, and Tony Budden is quite famous uh, now. And I must just add that, that uh, the Department of Health, strangely enough, is making some permits available to South Africans. Uh, you can go through quite a lengthy process and then you are allowed to grow two hectares of, of industrial cam cannabis. So uh, as far as the applications are concerned with the industrial cannab cannabis, they're absolutely vast. When it comes to um, other uses, medical uses or uses for recreation as, as people like to use it, like to call it, we estimated that there is probably 20 million cannabis users in South Africa. And this is everybody from your top executives down to your person on the street. So that in itself is 
it would be too, too long for me to describe all the potential of all the businesses surrounding that. So if we take it back to the medical side of yeah. things, there's already an international company asking to do research locally into medical marijuana. Are we sitting on our laurels and missing out on potential massive income opportunities because of that? Just a, uh, just a comment about the, the international company. Um, we will be extremely dis disappointed if that particular company gets the first medical cannabis um, a trial uh, accepted in South Africa because uh, the, the fact of the matter is is that there's a very, very big underground movement in cannabis in South Africa. And within that movement is all the ex experts that you need. Bertrand, so that's my first comment, sorry. Bertrand, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it at that for today. Thank you so much for making the time to uh, come and join us.